Hello everybody, I hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy during these strange times. Today I'm going to present my final project for my science and politics class which is on cloning. There are a couple of different types of cloning we're going to discuss today. We're going to discuss the basics of each type of cloning and how they're different. And then we're also going to think about the ethical implications for cloning itself. All right, here's the diagram I drew by myself for this presentation to serve as an outline. I've emailed this to all of you, so please have that open on the side if you could. I would really appreciate it. So like I said, this presentation is really going to be broken down into three main parts. The first part discusses the type of cloning that everybody thinks about when they hear the word cloning, which is reproductive cloning. I'm going to focus on the specific process as well as how the process was used to clone Dolly the sheep. The second part of my presentation is going to be about gene cloning, where I'll define what a gene is and then we'll be talking about CRISPR and PCR as forms of gene cloning. And finally, we'll talk about how gene cloning and reproductive cloning are used in combination to create the third category, therapeutic cloning. Alright, so let's start by talking about reproductive cloning. Reproductive cloning is the main part of cloning that makes it so controversial. The end result of reproductive cloning is a fully developed organism that is an exact copy of the original organism. If we zoom in on this small part of my presentation, you can see the schematic I've drawn to describe reproductive cloning. Reproductive cloning begins with a donor cell and an egg cell. The donor cell can be any cell from the organism. The nucleus from the egg cell is removed. The two cell membranes from the egg cell and the donor cell are then merged, which causes the donor nucleus to act as the new nucleus. An egg cell must be used because an egg cell is programmed to divide rapidly and create a new organism. The addition of the donor nucleus acts as fertilizing the egg cell, which then allows it to divide and create a new organism. If the egg cell nucleus was not removed, the resulting organism would have extra DNA, which is not good. The merged egg cell and donor nucleus are then given a jolt of electricity, which causes it to rapidly divide and create an organism. This is exactly what scientists did when they created Dolly. A donor cell was harvested from an adult sheep. The nucleus of the donor cell was then fused with the empty egg cell. After a jolt of electricity, the embryo rapidly divided and created Dolly. Though the creation of Dolly was a tremendous success, there were also some issues. Dolly's lifespan was significantly shortened. She died of a genetic disease which is only common in older sheep. This is likely because any problems that the original donor nucleus cell had were carried over to Dolly. This poses a significant ethical issue if we are decreasing the quality of life for a cloned organism. Now let's talk about another type of cloning, which is gene cloning. Gene cloning results in an exact copy of a specific gene. A gene is a piece of DNA, and DNA is the information that makes you you. There's less controversy around gene cloning because our bodies do it all the time. Humans have figured out how to copy genes outside of the body in test tubes. This process is called polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. PCR starts with a single section of DNA, or a gene. Through a process of heating and cooling, copies of the original gene are made. This process can be repeated over and over again until millions and millions of copies of the original DNA exist. While there aren't many ethical implications with this specific PCR technique, as it is widely accepted and used in labs all across the world, there are some issues with other gene cloning techniques. A process called CRISPR poses many ethical implications, though it's very exciting for potential gene therapy. CRISPR can be used to cut out a specific segment of DNA, which could be mutated, the normal version of this DNA can then be inserted and the normal gene can be produced. PCR could then be used to create many copies of this new gene that they've created. Since many diseases result from a mutated piece of DNA, CRISPR could potentially be a life-saving treatment. 
However, cloning a gene that we've mutated using CRISPR poses many, many ethical implications. For example, these methods could potentially be used as a form of bioterrorism by creating mutated pieces of DNA that could then be used as weapons. I know it sounds really sci-fi-like, but it's out there. It's a possibility. The final piece of cloning I'm going to be focusing on is therapeutic cloning, which is a combination of both gene cloning and reproductive cloning. In therapeutic cloning, the goal is to improve health and well-being by using cloning to do this. Using these two methods of gene cloning and reproductive cloning, therapeutic cloning is being used to treat diseases like cystic fibrosis. A gene can be edited by CRISPR and replicated using PCR. The edited DNA can then be inserted into the egg cell and shocked, causing it to grow. This will result in stem cells that can be used to treat various diseases. But wait, doesn't reproductive cloning produce an organism? Not always. If we look at our process of Dolly the sheep, if the process had been stopped when the embryo was developing, stem cells could be harvested from that embryo. Harvesting stem cells from an embryo poses major ethical implications. It requires stopping the process of division which creates a new life and using and harvesting those stem cells for a scientific purpose. For people who are very strongly pro-life, reproductive cloning that stops and results in stem cells is very, very controversial. Another controversial idea with therapeutic cloning is the idea that the edited DNA could result in a designer baby. For example, I could pay scientists a buttload of money to edit my DNA so that I know for sure my baby will have a specific characteristic. That DNA could then be inserted into one of my egg cells and grown. The resulting baby would then be a designer baby which I chose the characteristics I wanted for. This poses many ethical implications like, should I be designing my own baby? Is it right or wrong for me to design my own baby? Additionally, what if I use these CRISPR and cloning techniques to then make sure that my baby didn't have a genetic disease? For example, if I know that Down syndrome runs in my family, is it right for me to edit my DNA to ensure my child does not have Down syndrome? Let's talk a little bit about how therapeutic cloning is being used in the context of cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis results from a mutation in a membrane protein. Therapeutic cloning could potentially be used to insert correct copies of the DNA responsible for this membrane protein into the cells of the lungs. This could potentially cure cystic fibrosis patients. Now that we've talked about the three main types of cloning, I want to bring up the idea that cloning also occurs naturally in life. For example, identical twins are also a type of clone. They share the same DNA and are identical copies of one another. Identical twins occur when a fertilized egg splits into multiple embryos, which then continue to divide on their own. Asexual reproduction could also be considered to be a type of cloning because it does not require multiple gametes to create an embryo. I was really bummed out that I didn't get to do this presentation live with you guys as a chalk talk, so if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot me an email. My email is ssmit30 at css.edu. Thank you for watching my presentation on cloning. I really appreciate it. Have a good day. Birdie, hey, come here. Hey. Say hi. Can you say hi? What? Huh? Can you say hi? Hey. Can you say hi? Hey. Birdie. Can you say hi? Oh, thank you. What? 
Oh, you sniffing the camera. Oh, oh, birdie. Hey.